bruise on my forehead. You actually hit me <laughs> with a book. It's not a mirror, dear. <laughs> Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Silent at Savageries, and today I'm doing my second in my series of, I can't remember what I've called it, I think it's Avagander at Michelle's or Avanosy through Michelle's, and Polly, who is my best friend of 31 years, is my special guest in this video, and she loves a nosy through anything. I do. She does. She's also very pregnant, so if she's wincing at any point, it's either because she's being kicked or some, something's happening. <laughs> not that thing, but as in. Not oh, as no. Thing, no. <laughs> we not hope, ready we, yet. We hope not. Not, not ready yet. yet. No. I've done a previous video like this with Lauren, from Lauren in the books, I'll link down below, and she went through my shelves and chose... The idea is I invite someone to choose books they have enjoyed, hated, or remind them of us in some way. And I've changed it a little bit, Lauren, you're gonna be furious at the end, because I also then give the guest a gift, and myself a gift, of a book, because books are the best presents. Um, you've known me for 31 years, we've done book groups together, you've been on the cover of a book, which I'll insert here. Yeah, we've known each other since before when Polly tried to shoot me with guns across the playground, because she was a bully. I was not a bully. <laughs> she wasn't a bully. No. Um, but sorry, also Oscar's really rolling around, but you can see little ears. Yeah, so if I look down all the time, that's why I've got to It's not the you. bump, she knows she's got that. <laughs> and so we've known each other since we were four. We used to love He-Man and She-Ra. Yeah. Okay. And we had those books. We did have those we books. We did have those books, they're very good books. Very classic um, literature. You kind of got me back into reading, really. Oh, a bit. I'll take that, I'll take that credit. Take yeah. That. yeah. And other fascinating book facts about Polly, we like to go on holidays with our friends Michelle and Dom to literary places. Such as when we went to Haworth and Polly broke into the Wuthering Heights farm. Because <laughs> it's all fenced off with rope and then all we heard was, exist. oops, and off she went in it. I think that's, you know, I, 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 I'm not sure this should be on the internet. I might get I chased down should. by the Wuthering Heights police. <laughs> I think, are there any other bookish facts? Well, we used to also, um, one of... When we worked for together for a little we bit, did. and we actually worked next door to the um, Time Literary Oh, we did. We, and and we were both obsessed because they had loads and loads of books all the time. And they used to get like parcel bags of books arriving. I think that might have been a bit of a catalyst, actually. It was. So, Polly, what books have you chosen off my shelves? Ooh. I'm just going to caveat this by saying that a lot of these books I've read a little while ago, so... Oh, sorry, I do that all the time. I pick a book and I can't remember what happened. A bit hazy on some of the plots, <laughs> but anyway, we'll just, we'll just go for it. Um, so I'm going to start with this book, Memoirs of a Geisha. <laughs> I love the fact you do that, because I would have done that if you'd have it to me. <laughs> and the reason why I chose this book is because um, this book is the one that started me being a part of book groups. So this Did is it? the very first. Didn't we do this as our own little mini book group with nobody else? Because um, I remember us going to the cinema and seeing the film. Yeah, I think it was. It, it was the book that started all book groups for me. So um, I'm very fond of of it for that reason and it's it's just a really good tale. And also Arthur Golden writes really well from a female's perspective because mm. Memoirs of Geisha is all about the memoirs of a geisha. You don't really need to say anything more than that about it do you? <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's kind of it. But also Polly goes, has been to Japan quite a bit and I'm going to go to Japan, Japan this year. And since then I've read a lot of sort of Japanese books by Japanese authors so um, How would you mm. compare the two? Do you think Japanese authors write better about Japan than Arthur Golden does? Mm. It's a good question. I think that the Japanese books that I've read are all extremely different to this. this That's is true. Because it's a I just generalise the whole of Japanese literature. <laughs> yeah. No, but but no, but it is true. To, it, I think it's a really good question because um, you know I've read a lot of Haruki Murakami. I've read some Yoko Ogawa. Both of those um, I love. What else? Uh, the one grotesque. Oh, author, um, Nancy Carino. Yeah, so that's partly because I tend to like, I quite like novels with a bit of a dark side. Mm. But there's something quite distinct and different about some of the Japanese writing. Quite often a bit of a dark quality. But I can only speak to the ones that I've read. Have you not so, read every Japanese book ever? Mm, Could you leave? So, the book that's just started book one. groups. Ah, Very good. Are you going to miss book group when you don't go? Or are you looking forward to just reading what you well? How much reading do you really get to do when you have a newborn child? Yeah, I don't know. Audio books might be really good at night. I've just so got a audible um, uh, offer subscription, yes. You're, oh, going to yeah. become, you're going to become Miss Mum's Net. Oh God, I already am. I can edit all these pauses out while Polly wait. While yeah, okay, while Polly. good. <laughs> Glad to know. Oh, which one do I do next? Book two, oh. Child 44. 
Oh. So this actually... This by Tom Rob Smith. By Tom Rob Smith. Sorry, Tom, I nearly forgot you. Um, Did he sign this one? Because I think we went to a signing together. Yes. So this is one of the books that... Sorry, I've discovered upon this page. I know. No. Ta-da! No. It is signed, you can't really see. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think I have a... Do I have a signed one? Yeah, you did. We both did. I think, and then you got me another signed copy of another one, of one of the series. I might have done, yeah. yeah. I went off the series. Sorry, mm. Tom Robbins. Sorry, yeah, no. But well, his new one, the one about the farm, is amazing. Oh. It's like better than the two that follow these. I'll have to read that. So, yes, yeah, so firstly it reminds me of us because we both had a small obsession about this book when it was out. Um, secondly, I love a thriller, um, and this is a rollicking thriller. It's also a historical thriller, so yeah. you learn a lot as well. Mm. Uh, opens with a really gruesome and surprising sort of scene. It does. It's quite may, a violent book. It's quite violent. Um, it's not for ladies. <laughs> I'm joking. Well, it is for this lady. Polly, Polly would beat me over the head with that if I had meant that genuinely. Actually, I'm just going to have a little pause here and just say I was, I was struggling a little bit when I was choosing my books because um, I've realised that out of six books I've chosen four male authors and I feel somewhat disappointed in my feminist book reading <laughs> self. Have you seen the film of this? Um, I have. Have I? Yes, I have seen the film. I have. <laughs> have I? Yes, I have. Baby Recent, brain. And not that far, not that long ago either. I've <laughs> Tom seen Hardy it. was good in it. Mm, and I did quite face. like it. Um, um, I know you mean Gary... Gary Oldman. Gary Oldman. I'm the hell hell I can know what you mean. <laughs> and what's his face out of all the male actors yeah. and I'm like, oh, I know what you mean. I have watched the film. The film was okay. But the book is the so book good. Is really. And it's a proper, proper, proper page turner. Yeah. And probably got me into thrillers more because, and I don't know if you've chosen one of these, but because of Tess Garrison. Yes. Uh, the Tess Garrison in that selection. It's, she's not. Oh, because Tess Garrison, Polly bought me The Surgeon, which is the first of the Risley oh and Isles books, when I was about to have surgery. It's about a psychopathic surgeon. I think that says all we need to about our friendship. <laughs> Here you are, Simon, you'll love this in the hospital, just before you have you know your... What? I genuinely, genuinely didn't even think at the time that that might be a sensitive thing to do. <laughs> also, another thing that this reminds me of, and I don't know if this is another book that you've put in the list or not, but um, Ian McEwan... Is he on? Has he chosen one of his? Can you remember what you've chosen? Um, she doesn't know what she's chosen. We went to go and get signings, didn't we? We did. Solar. Um, and um, <laughs> he said to us, he said, oh, what's your name? Or who do you want me to sign this for? And I just went, me. <laughs> <laughs> who can you sign this for? Me. <laughs> and, and your name is? Oh yeah, Polly. Oh yeah, yeah. Mm. But um, we both got really starstruck. Mm. By and Ian the books that I nearly didn't, I nearly did choose, but didn't just because I'd run out of books and I thought I was overthinking it because I, I, I do do that sometimes. Um, was on Chisel Beach by oh, Hulk, that's an which amazing, is amazing book. book. Yeah. That is amazing. Mm. Did we read that together? No. Yes, we did. Did we? I yeah. thought we read. Um, I think it was another book group one. Wasn't. Uh, not Entanglement. Atonement. Atonement. We read a couple of books. Oh, yeah. we loved a bit of McEwen. Mm. I haven't read him for ages because I read Sweet Tooth and went off him. Mm. Solar really put me off him. Sweet mm. Tooth put me off him a bit. But then I've heard that his new one about the baby, this is appropriate, the one about the baby in the womb hearing the, a murder plot Ooh. through the walls of his mother's womb. That sounds amazing. See, that Polly needs is that book. Yeah. Oh, I can download it on my Kindle. Yeah. Train home. Oh, dirty Kindle. Mm. I, would, I would still, if anyone hasn't read that book, recommend it as one of my favourite thrillers. That's something I might actually read again. No, hated is a strong word. Oh, we could have a fight now. We've never had a... I think the only time I've ever had a fight is when you told me off on the staircase once. I don't think we'll have a fight about this, but... No, I didn't hate this, but I was really disappointed. Oh. Which is sad. I was disappointed <gasps> by the mobile library. Oh, we might have a fight about really? this. Really? Yeah. By David I Whitehouse. I really loved that, and I yeah. chose that as a fiction... I judged fiction uncovered two years ago, and this was one of the winners because we all loved Sorry, it so David. much. Polly's a horrible person. It wasn't so much the content of the book that disappointed me, because I actually... It's a good story. It's interesting. There's some bits lovely that are really memorable. Lovely cover. Certain really memorable bits. Yeah. So there's a bit where um, there is a house and the house has got, it's all very strange. Oh, it's a gothic house. It's, it's got gothic. a zoo at the it's back. It's got a zoo at the back, which weirdly also is like a film that I saw the other day, which also had a zoo in it. Oh. I, I, I met bought a zoo. Oh yeah, with, what's I his, like that uh, film, Matt Damon. Matt Damon. <laughs> with what's his face? What's his face? <laughs> Matt Damon. <laughs> anyway. Or Gary Oldman. <clears throat> yeah, one or the other. Anyway, so um, bits of it really just stay with me. What I was disappointed by is I felt I was 
everything that I read in terms of the blurb or the way that it was kind of positioned with the cover was it was going to be really like cheerful and like... It is cheerful. What book were you reading? <laughs> well, the ending's a little bit dark, I suppose. I also like oh, the fact the ending's a also... Bit dark. a bit dark. No, because it, but it's designed to be... What I loved about this book particularly was, I didn't spot it until I got to the end, it's designed to read like a fairy tale. Oh. Because as you go through, you realise that there's... Um, there's nods to all the previous fairy tales, like there's a bit of a nod to The Wizard of Oz, there's a bit of a nod to Rapunzel, a bit of a nod to Cinderella, a bit of a nod to... So by the end of it, I felt like I'd read a fairy tale for a grown-up because I was looking at all the riffs and nods of fairy tales. So that's one of the reasons I loved it so much. I also loved it because it's about basically a young boy... Well, not young, he's not that young. He's sort of early teens. No, I haven't done a very good job of explaining what the book's about. It's about early yeah. teens and basically he befriends a woman <coughs> who runs a mobile library and mm. her disabled daughter um, who's being bullied and he's being bullied as well but also he's got a horrible family situation and they all run away together in a mobile library so she sort of kidnaps him but that's how it starts mm. isn't it because at the beginning the police are trying to get them to all get out of the mobile library and then you're left on the literal cliffhanger until you get to the end of the book mm. but I like it because it's about friendship it's about celebrating people being different but it is very dark and not completely happy I will admit yeah. There's one scene that I Which can't forget about, about, about a man's appendi appendage. That literally, I had to read oh, three yeah. times. <laughs> no, so. no, it is, it is actually, the content is good. Um, I think it's just, you know, you pick a book at the time when you're sort of expecting something. Yeah. And to be honest, maybe that's a bad thing to do. Yeah. Um, but at the time, I was just kind of looking for a cosy hug. Sort a cosy of hug. Oh, it's not really a cosy hug sort it's of book. It's not a cosy hug sort no. of book. I was thinking of a more of a St. Alan, Alan Bennett and Common a, Reader sort of Maybe it was the wrong hug. time. Maybe it's just the wrong time. Wrong time. Mm. What's the next book, Polly? Okay. Uh, oh. Simon already hinted at this. Uh, oh, I didn't hint at this author. No, no, but you hinted oh. at something that I'm really bad at, which is I, I'm really nosy. <laughs> <laughs> this book is The Fantastic Book of Everybody's Secrets by Sophie Hannah. And it's short stories, isn't it? And it's a book of short stories. Um, you should do your own booktube video called Book on the Bump. I could do, couldn't I? It might not be very <laughs> might long might not last very long. <laughs> be like one of those just, um, series like uh, Faulty Towers yeah. where, you know, everybody loves it and then it's, it goes up really quickly. And then, you know, well, that's why probably instantly think she's going to be really popular on booktube if she Obviously. did it. Like. Anyway, uh, I picked this because, yeah, it reminds me of Us Again. Um, Polly, you bought this, told me all about it and then I ran and bought it. Yeah. Because it was in the, octop so called I, the Octopus something the that octopus you were like. The Octopus Nest, I think, was the... So the, the, I don't love every single short story in here as much as the other, but there was one or two in here that I really, really liked. Um, but you talked about the Octopus Nest Also, I love the lot. cover. How awesome is the cover? It is a lovely cover. And, yeah, I just spotted it. I'd, it was one of those impromptu buys. I spotted it in the bookshop and loved the title, loved the cover, had a little flick through and, and thought it would be enjoyable. Anyway, this also then set me off on, I recommended it to Simon, and then um, set me off on her uh, crime novel. The first one's Little Face, Little Face, which is really creepy, and a woman, doesn't she, what is it, she wakes up one day, goes to the cot, and the baby is she not says hers. it's not hers. And the thing is, obviously I should not read that now. What I like about that series particularly is that she purposefully goes out of her way to create something that's impossible to solve, mm. and then works backwards from it. Yes. But oh. and not as in, for us, you don't read it that way, but yeah. that's how I saw her talk about it. In fact, I went to an event, you came to see yeah. me at an event that I did to Sophie, yeah. Um, no, Cambridge. Um, <laughs> same very thing. specific there, sorry. Same thing. <laughs> <laughs> same place. But also she now rewrites, well, she's writing the new Poirot books. I don't like Poirot. Yeah, I, I would quite like to read one of those. I um, don't like Poirot, so I don't want to read any. What I like books. about her uh, fiction, her crime fiction as well, is that it's a bit different to mm. other crime fiction I've read. It's a little bit more... Twisty. I will like say. More, if I think about like associating it with another writer, I think a bit more reminds me of like say Roald Dahl and his unexpected stories, yeah, but a, mashed into yeah. a thriller. Right, I'll move on. Is this the penultimate one or the final one? Penultimate one. one. Oh. Michael Faber's Under the Skin. Oh. And I was actually hunting around on your shelves for the Crimson Petal and the White. I do have that. Mm. Somewhere near it. Shelves. Oh, it is. It's probably not anywhere near that it one. It wasn't Alpha. They're not in Alpha's Claudia. Yet. That's me told. So, Polly's not coming here again until they are done. <laughs> this book is brilliant. It is brilliant. And I love this author. Um, I find him impossible to review. I've tried to review every one of his hard. books and I can't do it. It's very hard to talk about 
what Especially this, this book one. is about without sort of... A lady's driving around in the Scottish wilderness away. looking for men. To That's the premise. But the question is, why is she looking for men? Exactly. And to say any more really kind of spoils, it. spoils what is a really original and fascinating dark. Somebody told me when I asked them what it was about, they were about, it's about cows. And it's not at all. It is about cattle, technically, oh, but it's not about cows. I'd forgotten about cattle. I have also seen the movie. Um, which is all right. Which is okay. Lots but I wouldn't, I wouldn't recommend it particularly. Um, it, it was okay. It was, given that it's such a unusual book, mm. like they did quite a good job, I think, of trying to interpret it. Um, what I like about him as an author is, having read this and Crimson Petal, I mean, goodness, they're such different styles of book yeah. and so fascinating. But love it, love it, love it. Read it, don't read it when you're kind of needing a hug of book. See? You like a little hug of a book, don't you? Well, I, I don't mostly don't, somebody. but I just like to know Okay, whether it's, it's going to be going huggy to be... or not. Yeah, exactly. Not hooker, huggy. <laughs> <laughs> I only like books that are hooker. Sure, there's a theme there, yeah. That's quite hard to say because it is quite... Mm, there's dark. dark. Mm. And then finally... Finally! The Prime of Miss Jean Brady. Oh, Mira Mira Spark. Spark. Polly got me into Mira Spark. So Adam at Momentum Warrior will appreciate this because he's a massive fan of Mira Spark and loves it. And it is Polly here who is the reason that I read Mira Spark. And I can't remember which one the first one I was, read. The driver's... No, it wasn't the driver's seat. Been there. It might have been this one, actually. Although this is my grand's copy, I think. Has it got Dorothy Savage written inside? It yes, does. it does. Look. It's my grand's copy. Isn't that lovely? Um, so, yeah, it's well, got a horrible cover. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was gonna. I saw the spine, and I was like, "Ooh, Penguin Classic version," which is the, it has the got kind. Maggie Smith on the cover. It does, which which makes everything good. L we love Maggie Smith. Love Maggie. I have, you know, what? I still haven't actually seen the movie. Mm -hmm. Polly banged on about me or us, but I was like, "Yeah, whatever." And then I tried it, and what I love about her is. <laughs> I don't think you were convinced by my trying to. I wasn't convinced this by book. this one first of all either, and I think I need to reread it. So I think mm. I appreciate it more now. But then when I read the driver's seat by me or us, that I think is that's like, a great book. Genius. And then Polly, your, is your favourite Memento Mori? Uh, I do love Memento Mori. And that's where somebody keeps phoning an old people's home saying you're going to die or something. Yeah. But I've still not read that one because you rated it so highly. I wanted that to be one of the last books I read. Mm. By, but we read Aiding and Abetting for Book Group, didn't we? Yeah, that Which was is a all bit, right. Yeah, it was all right. It was I find uh, I think I think if you'd read it at the time that all those all recent things yeah. happened, so it was about Lord Lucan disappearing, I think it made more sense, but it was a bit over my head. Yeah, it, but yeah. also I think as well, I do find, and I'm sorry to say this about Mira's Clark, she can be a bit up and down, thank you Polly. Uh, she can be a bit up and down for me, so I think she's utterly brilliant, yeah, yeah. or sometimes a bit like, mm, I'm not sure about this one. But Which is the same with Angela bit, Carter. Right? And Daffers How bit dare you? No, she is, and I nearly no. picked Daffers, but you, you, you see... Mm. I, can't have a, I can't have a cohesive conversation about Daphne tomorrow unless it's, I love her. The end. I nearly picked Jamaica in, but I was That's running weirdly, out of choices. That's not one of my favourites of hers. I know. Anyway, back to me as well. Okay, anyway, so the Prime Minister's Brute Jean Brody, there used to be in when I was a um, You're obsessed with hairs. My books have got cats. hairs. <laughs> Ooh, I'm really selling my personal library then. <laughs> well you do have cats. Um which go with books, so okay. anyway, so when I was an old teenager there was an amazing little bookshop in North Shields, yeah. uh, in the northeast where I was living at the time. They had heaps and heaps of uh, Penguin classics, uh, all for a pound each, just on shelves, just um, like all stacked up, and days. I was just like, loved that. So that's when I bought the Prime Minister's Miss Jean Brodie. I never read it for school or anything, I know it's kind of a school classic. Um, and I just loved, um, I just thought it was so kind of, God, why did I love it so much? I love the character of uh, Miss Jean Brodie, thought she was... Uh, fascinating. I thought she was witty. Polly's now started to read the book again. Yeah, she was witty. Um, I just, it's just very well to put she's together. She's quite snarky. She's quite snarky. Now, I, I like think a bit part of, of part of this um, uh, reminds me of my my late grandmother. So I think maybe oh, um, Omar. very strong character. Um, very. Um, she was a teacher actually for a long feisty. period of time. Very feisty and very strong opinioned. So, and so I think I liked. was probably drawn to the character a little <laughs> bit because of that. Yeah, and of course, you know, uh, you know, the character has her sort of dark side and her failings mm. as well. But it's just, it's just a beautiful little moment of time and an exploration of an interesting woman. Character study actually it is, yeah. as well. Mm. I went all literary there. <laughs>
Yes. It's a fascinating character study. Yes. But I'm grateful for you to introduce me to Muriel Spark. I need to read more of it. The other book by Muriel Spark, which is brilliant, is The Girls of San Domingo. So those are Polly's picks those off my shelf. My now I bring a book present for Polly to say thank you for being on the video. But also means I get the same book to say to thank you talk. to me for being me. Um, and it's a book I think we'll both love. And you'll, when you open it, you'll see why. And we're going to get yours first. Okay, do you want me to do it really slowly? Yeah, I'll do my presents. Polly's like the most pedantic opener of presents. It's like I can't, she can't ruin the paper, whereas I just I go like properly in. Thank you. Thank you. It's Harriet Harman's A Woman's Work. Now, the reason I bought this for you is, and me, is because, well, Harriet Harman's my favourite politician. <laughs> Which I know is a very dubious thing to say about any politician. But I thought you'd like this because it's her autobiography and it's all about how she got into politics. Because you can be quite political, mm. but also I think she's quite an... People might not say this, but I think she's quite an icon. Well, the thing is, right, that I know very little about her, so I think it's quite nice. This is the beauty of having other bookish friends who can recommend for you, know you inside out, yeah. is that you can say, actually, I think you'd really love to read about this person. Yeah. So, and I do love uh, an inspiring uh, female Well, there was model. that pit that I thought, because regardless of politics, she is an inspiring female mm. role model. But also I thought she's very, very um, out there on women's rights and all those sort of things, which I think is brilliant. But also I think it's just the Labour Party's in a really interesting slash awful state at the moment. Mm. So I'm just, I'm just wanting to read this for a little bit of hope. <laughs> a little bit of ray of sunshine. <laughs> well, that might not be. Cause she did. Also, it's got pictures. Oh, we love pictures. On a silly level, it's got pictures. So yeah, it's so I thought book. me and Polly would like this. I'm I'll probably read it in about five years. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and also, I've not heard of... I think I'm already it's, reading it. Oh, Polly's reading it. She's gone. So we're both oh, reading it now. So anyway... That's like a, a Gordon Brown in the olden days as well. Is it Gordon Brown? Yes. Oh, look at that. He's in a no anyway. Sorry. Well, no, sorry about that. So, yes, yeah, so that's the book that I thought you'd like. You might not like it. You'll have to feed back and let me know. No, but I'm really glad you chose it because I don't think. A bit I different. Have... And also non fiction, and I don't read enough non fiction. Yeah, I don't either. Unless it's about work related sort of things. Yawn. I'll be back with another video very soon, but for now, it's goodbye from me and from Polly. Bye. I never wave and I do it every time with somebody else in the video. Bye. Bye. You wave your nice.